and we're set. We're all ready to go then. Let's get to this. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal. Episodes 19 and 20. So far, I'm liking what's going on. And then we have time travel. Ooh. <laughs> yes. To quote from Bob and George, I hate time travel. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, it's so hard to write a time travel story, right? And this is back when we still thought that, oh, people from the past can't exist with themselves in the future. Then we get these weird fade things. I'm like, I know this is stuff for your story and it's important to the plot and everything, but no, technically, physically, they're actually different people. I know they are the same person, but your body actually replenishes its cells over time, so technically you're not even the same person two weeks from now. Um, if I recall correctly, it takes longer than that for every cell in your body to regenerate, and I thought the science was that brain cells are the ones you're stuck with the whole time, which is why when you screw yourself up mentally, you do it real good. Um... Recent studies say that your brain does replenish itself over time. It just takes way longer than the rest of the body. But moving on from science, what were your thoughts on this episode? <laughs> I wish we could have gone just one episode further. That would have taken us to the end of Volume 4, and that feels like a much more fitting ending place than we went to the future, and then we came back to the past for two seconds, and then we went back to the future. <laughs> and Sailor Moon can't do anything. And Tuxedo Mask is finally getting to do something. Again. <laughs> I mean, last time he took out a lower level underling. This time he took out one of the Elite Four. <laughs> uh, though uh, another problem I have with these two episodes, mostly in the second one, is the whole, are we seriously doing a love triangle between the daughter from the future and the current girlfriend who becomes her mother? Is that what's going on? Really? It's called an Electra Complex, and yes, we are. <laughs> oh my god! So Japanese! <laughs> uh, that was only like a really minor problem for me, because like all the stuff that was leading up to that point was like, Oh, this is cool, and wait, wait, wait. Seriously? Seriously? <laughs> I don't remember a time when I didn't know who Chibiusa was, so it was never really a surprise for me. It was just more of a... Really? Even after you know that's your future father? You know, at that point it should kind of stop. Uh, and speaking of that, I love the reactions of, What? And uh, they look at each other, blush, and Venus in the background going, What? 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 Excellent. And some of the more, i say, cute slash frivolous animation that we've seen in this series. Most of the animation has been gorgeously stunning and serious. But in this episode and in episode 19, we have pieces that make me think of the first iteration of the anime. You know, with the colored backgrounds and the borders and the blush and the what the? Because I think in the first anime, when it came out, at least in the English version, they have Rei going, When and how exactly did this happen? <laughs> As if the entire thing isn't embarrassing enough. I mean, they've known each other for less than a year. Never mind that they're reincarnated, so they technically knew each other before that. They met each other less than a year ago. Yeah, I, I just read in Slim Wind's expression like, Oh, we're gonna be doing that? I may have thought about that, but jeez. <laughs> Poor Tuxedo Man's going, Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, that's kind of good to know. <laughs> uh, and then there's Luda and Artemis. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm your daughter! Holy! Oh. <laughs> like, wait a minute, I'm not even sure I like him! <laughs> uh, and then there's Sailor Pluto. Oh, poor Pluto, you've been demoted. Um, <laughs> I'm talking about the planet, not the Sailor Scout, but... Because <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I just thought, it's like, oh, well, yeah, this kind of has different context nowadays because of the whole, yeah, poor Pluto. You're now a, um... God, I can't remember the term for it now, but it's like lower planet. <laughs> oh, dwarf planet. Yes, that's the word I was looking for. Though I think they're more relating it more towards the Greek god than anything. Though I think, wasn't Pluto the underworld version? No. Pluto corresponds to Hades, who was god of the underworld, which does not at all correlate to Sailor Pluto, who is a descendant of the god of time, Kronos. Mm. 
she has been the same Sailor Scout the whole time, no reincarnations or anything. Because her destiny is not to be a guardian goddess for the princess, her destiny is to be the guardian of the last forbidden frontier, the gateway of time, which we are so casually abusing. <laughs> yeah, especially now. Um, give her a key. It's an emergency. Okay, here's a key. <laughs> you stole a key, but it's okay because you're alive. <laughs> Any your thoughts on the first episode of these two? The first didn't stand out to me as much, and probably because I've I'm trying not to reread ahead of the series, but I'm rereading the manga as we go along, and just the whole Chiril and a Chiril is like, ah, uh, wow, there I can't believe there are moments in anime that make me feel this dumb. Why does the author have to be a chemist? This all makes amazing sense with chemical information. Because those names are two types of molecules that behave in two different ways, which is why the attack works the way it does. Thank you, translation notes. <laughs> All I thought was like, that's kind of like the Gemini twins. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, except there was more to it than that, because there was, like, so many Japanese names in shows, there was additional meaning to them. Mm -hmm. I'm really feeling the buildup in these episodes to something. I am liking what's going on. Like I said, I only have small problems with this episode, the whole time travel thing, which is hard to get right in the whole, really, love triangle? We're going there? Uh, <laughs> and since, you know, I haven't experienced this part of the Silly Moon story fully, you know, I've heard snippets of it and stuff about it from other um, stuff over time because, you know, Silly Moon's really old and this is just a new telling of the Silly Moon story. But this is my first time experiencing it directly in chronological order. So I'm all excited and everything because I don't know what's going to happen. So I'm like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Unlike me who goes, yeah, with slight variations, I know exactly what's going to happen. And some variations I like and some variations I don't like. For example, I kind of like that King Endymion's outfit is white rather than lavender. I think it makes a better match for Neo Queen Serenity, you know, being all white and gold and him being in white. But it reminds me of a character that I don't even know what series it's from because I saw it in some AMV where I went, wow, that character looks like Tuxedo Mask Skull in white. Because <laughs> it was like a white tuxedo with a white cape and a cane and it looked action-y. I just had a curiosity. Did this whole thing about the moon attacking not the dark moon people attacking them was it out of jealousy and wanting serenity for himself or something because there's hints that the main bad guy of this group likes queen serenity or something oh he may just be a tad obsessed with her but that wasn't the initial reason that they became rebels mm. it's part of his obsession going into the past because you know we see him studying that hologram of her and kind of obsessing over it a tiny bit but no that's not the entire reason okay can't wait to find out though because i was like is this the classic i want this i'm obsessed with this i want it now oh look some guy gives me the power to do it yay <laughs> also i want to find out more about the planet apparently the planet was so mysterious and then they went hey let's throw prisoners on it yeah that's always a good idea <laughs> yes because imprisoning them somewhere on earth um why not but no let's exile them to a strange planet with a negative energy yeah not the brightest plans in the world i can think of another princess that did that let's give all our powers to a, a lower princess that's just became a princess yeah that's one way to hide it oh wait now we can't fight Tyrik. damn <laughs> i was actually going to oh yeah you know what i need to stop you so let's exile you to the moon <laughs> Or an evil queen's plan. Yes, let's take over the kingdom and every make everyone hate us. Wait a minute, don't we eat love? Um, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm definitely liking where this is going, except for, you know, the part I mentioned before. The art is really good. I'm really excited for the story. And once again, everything's damn beautiful. <laughs> it just keeps getting prettier. I know, and I'm like... Okay, so one of the Elite Four has fallen, and so all we have left is Ruby, who we've seen a lot of, Sapphire, who we don't see much of, and Diamond, who 
despite being one of the Elite Four, is also the leader. And you know, that's really got to suck for Emerald. Hey, I just got this brand new power from Wise Man, so let me go win the battle for us. Oh, dang, I lost in 30 seconds. <laughs> A real shame, really. And I was taken out by the guy. I didn't think the guy had powers. <laughs> Uh, oh, that brings up the other thing that um, another negative, oh, mild negative for me is that I'm so I'm starting to get the feeling of why aren't their heroes doing their job? This is the point where I would start running in my own character because I'm getting frustrated with the heroes not doing their job, and then oh, tuxedo mask of the day. Okay, that works. <laughs> yes, well, you know, Salem wins the most powerful, so we had to disable her. We've kidnapped three of the four other Sailor Scouts, so we only have Venus. Chibiusa can't use her powers yet, and Tuxedo Mask is mastering his powers of psychometry, pronunciation butcher, check, uh, much faster than King Endymion remembers. That's a line that is in the manga that was not in this episode. He was talking about how strange it feels to talk to my younger self, and huh, I don't remember mastering my power as quickly as you are. This is excellent. <laughs> oh. So what other differences from the manga do you see and more about, you know, which ones you liked and didn't like? Mm, the exclusion of that line was one thing. The scene where Ruby is catches Emerald spying and they are drawn to the attention of the prince went on a bit longer than it did in the manga. Also, when Chibiusa went back to the future, I do not remember and I went back and look, she only goes to her mother, not to a room where all the other bodies are laid out. Because that right there caused an issue for me in the anime, because Sailor Moon was the one fading out, and in the manga, and I went back and looked, Tuxedo Mask did not fade out, only Sailor Moon. Because Tuxedo Mask's body was in another location, only his spirit was there, and it was the presence of the two physical bodies together that was causing the problem, which is why in the manga it was only Sailor Moon. But in the anime, it was both Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask, which implies that King Endymion's body is close enough to cause that effect. But we see Chibiusa go to the hall where her father's body is laid out. The other four goddesses are there, and so are Luna and Artemis, which means that every single character that traveled from the past is theoretically within close enough physical distance to their future counterpart that every single one of them should have had an issue by the rules that the anime is going by. Though I kind of wonder why the palace had a hall like that. Because it's not like they were in beds. They're, it's like, okay, why do we have six stone slabs? Um, so five for the girls and one for the king? And that's kind of creepy because, you know, you guys are long lived and everything. <laughs> It's like the designer's going, why are we making a room like this? I don't know, it's in the plans. <laughs> I mean, if it's supposed to be a chapel, there should, like, be pews. And if there's going to be an altar, there should only be one. And always to me in the manga, it felt more like the guardian goddesses were definitely dead and the king was mostly dead. Where now they seem to be at about the same level. And, you know, that could have just been an interpretation on my part in the way I read the emphasis of the words in the manga. Of course, every time I hear mostly dead, I can't help but think of Princess Bride, but... <laughs> well, of course. So any more thoughts on the episodes? Uh, just that this is not where I wanted to stop. I really wish we could have gone just one more episode further. Because I really feel like we've been left hanging because I know what's coming next. Hmm. I didn't get that same feeling of being left hanging. The pacing definitely feels quick it definitely feels like we're building to something which i like just you know the minor stuff i've said before and everything's going good so far so final thoughts enjoyed these two episodes a lot of background a lot of character development but still enough fighting to keep it from being more than just talking heads and definitely building up to something and we'll just have to wait till next time to see what it is yeah, I'm really enjoying the build-up, the pacing feels good, it definitely feels like the pacing's increasing to get to somewhere. And from someone who hasn't read the manga up to this point, I'm really enjoying not knowing what's going to happen next or what's coming up. So that's really fun for me. Overall, I really like these two episodes and can't wait for more. 
And this has been our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, episodes 19 and 20. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a friendly comment below and consider subscribing to our channel. Like Lux's art and would like to see more of it? You can find him on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Want to keep track of what's going on with this channel? You can follow us on Tumblr as well. Really like Lux's art and would like some of your own? He is currently open for commissions. Links in the description.